Good day, fellow disciple of Jesus. Welcome to prayer for Monday, the 25th of October. Let's take a deep breath as we begin with our introductory responses. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. May all the earth be filled with God's glory. Together, may all the earth be filled with God's glory. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true-hearted and joyful gladness for those who are true-hearted. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth and peace to God's people on earth. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. O come, let us worship. Psalm 41 instructs us to consider the poor and needy and to find our happiness in relieving the needs of others. The psalmist writes this prayer and encouragement to us even with a sense of having been betrayed by their best friend. Overcoming this bitterness, the psalmist looks toward the Lord. Happy are they who consider the poor and needy. The Lord will deliver them in the time of trouble. The Lord preserves them and keeps them alive, so that they may be happy in the land. He does not hand them over to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and ministers to them in their illness. I said, Lord, be merciful to me, heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies are saying wicked things about me. When will he die and his name perish? Even if they come to see me, they speak empty words. Their heart collects false rumors. They go outside and spread them. All my enemies whisper together about me and devise evil against me. A deadly thing, they say, has fastened on him. He has taken to his bed and will never get up again. Even my best friend, whom I trusted, who broke bread with me, has lifted up his heel and turned against me. But you, O Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up, and I shall repay them. By this I know you are pleased with me, that my enemy does not triumph over me. In my integrity you hold me fast and shall set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from age to age. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Remember us, gracious God, when we are lonely and depressed, and support us in the dark night of our grief and despair. For your love is faithful, and you do not forget your broken ones. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Together, glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today we're reading in Ezra chapter 4, verse 7, and then 11 to 24. These verses uh, summarize by Ezra the entire story of the opposition to building the temple, the walls, and other important buildings in Jerusalem. This is a letter to King Artaxerxes, and it's really wonderful to have a, an actual letter to a king embedded in our sacred text. It's a wonderful historical snippet. And in the days of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Bishlam, Mithrada, Tabil, and the rest of his associates, wrote a letter to Artaxerxes. The letter was written in Aramaic script and in the Aramaic language. This is a copy of the letter they sent him. To King Artaxerxes, from your servants, the men of Trans-Euphrates, the king should know that the Jews who came up to us from you have gone to Jerusalem and are rebuilding that rebellious and wicked city. They are restoring the walls and repairing the foundations. Furthermore, the king should know that if this city is built and its walls are restored, no more taxes, tribute, or duty will be paid, and the royal revenues will suffer. Now, since we are under obligation to the palace, and it is not proper for us to see the king dishonored, we are sending this message to inform the king, so that a search may be made in the archives of your predecessors. 
In these records you will find that this city is a rebellious city, troublesome to kings and provinces, a place of rebellion from ancient times. This is why this city was destroyed. We inform the king that if this city is built and its walls are restored, you will be left with nothing in trans-Euphrates. The king sent this reply to Rehum, the commanding officer, Shimshai, the secretary, and the rest of their associates living in Samaria and elsewhere in trans-Euphrates. Greetings. The letter you sent us has been read and translated in my presence. I issued an order and a search was made, and it was found that this city has a long history of revolt against kings and has been a place of rebellion and sedition. Jerusalem has had powerful kings ruling over the whole of trans-Euphrates, and taxes, tribute, and duty were paid to them. Now, issue an order to these men to stop work, so that this city will not be rebuilt until I so order. Be careful not to neglect this matter. Why let this threat grow to the detriment of the royal interests? As soon as the copy of the letter of King Artaxerxes was read to Rehum and Shimshai, the secretary, and their associates, they went immediately to the Jews in Jerusalem and compelled them by force to stop. Thus, the work on the house of God in Jerusalem came to a standstill until the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm sure the returning exiles were excited to begin the renewal of their city and also to rebuild the temple. Unfortunately, this project was opposed by other political powers in the area west of Babylon and west of Persia. They want the king to know that the people of Jerusalem are a rebellious nation and not to be trusted and to halt the rebuilding of the city, its walls, and worship center. The king agrees, much to the sorrow of the community of Jerusalem, I'm sure. What roadblocks have we run into during this COVID time? How have our plans been frustrated? How do we respond? Do we respond with a faithful patience, looking forward to the day, or do we let our frustrations turn to anger and sorrow? Remember, one of the beautiful fruits of the Holy Spirit is patience, or I like the older translations, long-suffering. I'm not saying I like suffering over a long period of time, but it does give us, a, I think, a better sense of the cost of patience. Patience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, which means it also is the fruit of self-discipline and intentionality to look to the long-term horizon and to integrate our present feelings of frustration. When we are frustrated, breathe deeply, count to ten, look to the longer-term horizon, look at others made also in the image and likeness of Christ, and move on with patience and grace. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, as we rest in God's presence, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray for the whole people of God, that each one may be 
a true and faithful servant of Christ. We especially pray for our six to be confirmed, for Haley, for Gabe, for Brees, for Ian, for Andrew, for John. Lord, hear and have mercy. For those drawing near to the light of faith, that the Lord will bring them to true knowledge of himself. For our family members and friends who have not yet come to the knowledge of Christ, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear and have mercy. For all our family members and friends, that the Lord will give them joy and satisfaction in all that they do, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray for those who are lonely, sick, hungry, persecuted, or ignored, that the Lord will comfort and sustain them. And today, O Lord, we especially pray for Joanne, for Joan, for Shirley, for Lila, Lisa, Janine, Jaritza, for Laura, for Rose, Richard, Ricardo, for Maggie, Ben, Brian. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray for our country, that the Lord will help us to contribute to its true growth and well-being. And we pray for our church in these difficult days, that you will grant us success as we seek to grow and to minister, and that you will provide the resources that we require to do the work that you're calling us to do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray for the whole human family, that we may live together in justice and peace. We pray for an equitable and timely distribution of the vaccine. And Lord, we pray for all who have been abducted, especially the missionaries in Haiti. You will hear their cry and deliver them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. Gathering all our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now the peace of God, which passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you in all that you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Monday, the beginning of a new week, walking in God's grace.